Hi everyone, welcome to Java Techie. If you are a Spring Boot developer, then you might be aware that Spring developers keep releasing new version in every one or two month, right? And in each release, they might add some new metadata or deprecating some classes, which is really good for developers to make use of the latest version. But are you guys aware of recent Spring Boot 3.1 changes on Spring security? How in security config, method chaining is getting replaced with functional programming? If not, don't worry. In this tutorial, I'll walk you through Spring security config and what all recent changes have been made in Spring Boot 3.1. Okay? Alright. So without any further delay, let's get started. So before I start explaining the things, if you are not aware about the latest Spring Security 6 changes, then I would strongly suggest you to go to my YouTube channel and check out these two particular videos. Spring Boot 3.0 Security, Authentication and Authorization, Spring Boot 3.0 with JWT. Okay? This will give you the clear picture of Spring Security and how you can implement the code change using the latest version of Spring Boot. Okay? Fine. Let's come back to the point. Let me go to my IntelliJ idea. I'll use some existing project which we already created before. So this is the Spring Boot 3 with JWT example which we already tried before. I'm using the same existing code. If you'll go and check in the config, security config, let me zoom this for you. Can you see here? There are so many warnings we are getting in our config class. Fine. Now if you'll go and check in our pom.xml, we are using the latest version of Spring Boot, which is 3.1.1. I believe 3.1.2 is there, but let's try with the 3.1.1. Okay. So with this 3.1.1, you will get this warning. But if I will downgrade this to 3.0, then there will be no warning. Let's try it out. It means the changes has been made on 3.1.1. Okay. Not in 3.0. So let's verify it. Okay, so the Maven is updated. Can you see here? There is no warning. Now again, I will revert back to the 3.1.1 and will verify what is the warning and how to fix it. So let's go back to the security config class. Now if you will hover your mouse to the warning statement, let's say CSRF, you can see here CSRF is deprecated and marked for removal. And if you observe this pattern is called method chaining. See here http.csrf.disable I mean each method just being called with this dot okay this entire pattern is called method chaining because this is internally using the builder pattern okay now this is not supported by spring boot 3.1.1 so how you can overcome that so you just need to convert this piece of code to functional programming I mean using the lambda how you can do that let me show you so this csrf what you can do here, just add the functional programming or lambda statement and remove this method chaining. So what you can do, just write CSRF, you know how to write the lambda statement, right? CSRF dot disable. Now I will remove this method. Fine. Now IntelliJ idea will suggest you to use the lambda with method reference instead of this syntax of lambda. Now you know how to write the method reference go to the method name disable which is present in this particular class copy the class name and simply specify the method name that's it just remove it specify the class name and just define the method name this is how you can write the functional programming okay now let's go to the next warning statement authorize http request if you hover your mouse you will get this Authorize HTTP request is deprecated and marked for removal, right? Now, how you can fix that? Very simple. Just use the lambda here. Okay. So, let me show you. You can define any name. Now, here I will just use auth dot request matchers. Now, you can specify this request matcher. Copy this 
I mean as per your requirement you need to configure the request matchers so let me paste it here just you need to convert it to the lambda that's it okay now the next one this request matcher right just copy this and just add a new line paste it fine so what we are doing here in the authorization HTTP request we are telling please bypass these two URL and just authenticate all the incoming requests coming with this URL okay that is what earlier we did using the dot and and now we are just converting it to the lambda so I just need to remove everything fine now go to the next statement which is session management session management is deprecated and marked for removal so what we can do here simple just convert it to the lambda so I'll just use session now I just need to set this creation policy right I will just copy this so I'll just add it inside the lambda session dot set creation policy stateless and remove this okay now this is what the complete code using the functional programming so we just use the method reference here in the CSRF and then here we use the lambda and then session management also converted to the lambda so this is how you can do the code change of your configuration class now with the latest code change whether the code is working or not let's quickly verify it so what I'll do I'll go to the main class I'll simply start it so just go to the postman so if you observe here in the config first we need to add a new user then we need to authenticate that user to get the token then going forward with that token we can access all our endpoint that already I have explained in this particular video how you can play with the JWT okay so I would strongly suggest you to check this out otherwise you won't understand how I am accessing the API from the postman so it's already started so first I need to add a new user with role right so I have this particular endpoint not this one okay so here I will give this particular user I will store this particular user in the DV user added to system let's verify in the DV so user added with the role admin okay now I will go to the postman I need to authenticate the user so that I can get the token right to authenticate a user I need name and password so just go to the authenticate method this is the username and password let me send the request we got the password now with this particular password or authenticate token JWT token we can play using all our API okay now let me get all the product from DB so to access this particular endpoint I need to provide the JWT token rather than username and password okay so just set the authorization type as a barrier then just place your token now all good send the request we got this result right all the list of product we can able to see as part of response so the token what I have given here having the role admin so if I will give some other username and password with different role it won't work that is what the JWT implementation right so we are good with the latest code change I mean just converting the method chaining to the functional programming our code is working as expected fine so do let me know in a comment section if you guys have any doubts that's all about this particular video guys thanks for watching this video meet you soon with a new concept